the horse. So, uh, guys, uh, yesterday we uh, yesterday morning we did almost all of chinte. So we're going to start by going through the first part again, just slowly, and then we'll finish off talking about the end of the kata. Okay, okay, so from the beginning, nice and relaxed. Okay, oi. And slowly, yeah. Ni. Sa. Shi. Bo. Okay, um, guys, let's go from this part again. So let's go from here because we didn't really talk about the block. So from here, go itch, ni, sa, shi, go, rock, shi, chach, go. Okay, yummy. So, guys, those 10 moves from this point until the Kiai, those 10 moves, just twice. Let me see what you're doing. Okay, go for it. Okay, okay, good. Okay, guys, um, I just want to like just spend a couple of minutes before we before we move past where we, we got up to yesterday, just a couple of minutes on those those uchukes. Okay, of course, with this kind of very uh, strange kind of hand position, but as we talked about yesterday, this sense of blocking, getting ready to catch, just this kind of putting your pressure on that part of the of the hand, like this kakie. This kind of pulling and grabbing and capturing movement, uh, rather than uchuke, it's kind of more kake feeling uh, as we go, right? But just the way that we're doing that is a little bit different. So, so from here, you've made shoulder dash, your hips are square. So, so from here, it's really natural to get that compression and synchronize this rotation with your with your basic uchuke uh, shape. Yeah. So, so this one. Get that preparation and really synchronize hip rotation with the pulling of the of the execution of the block before you drive forward for this shawmanda shizen. Maybe not complete hamni, but like that shizen feeling is okay. Uh, but the next one, I want you to kind of put a little bit more effort into a little bit more thought. Then don't be two ways you can do it. First way, you can super rotate and then counter rotate like this classic. Uchuke basic kihon feeling. So, so from here, so from this angle, you are you are rotating into shoulder and then rotating into hamni to block this uchuke shape. You understand? That's super basic, super easy. Okay, so in fact, we're going to come back to the movement of the block with the two fingers in the same way that we practiced yesterday. So, just to remind you of having the sensation of putting pressure on the interior of your de votre main là, du côté un peu euh, du pouce, d'avoir l'impression de bloquer puis de vouloir agripper. Euh, ça, c'est euh, la première chose. Par la suite, il euh, y a deux façons aussi de, de faire le mouvement. Euh, Stenti les a démontrés, là, donc euh, au niveau euh, plus euh, de la rotation euh, de la hanche. OK. But another way, a different way, a little bit more feeling, a little bit more kind of taste to your kata is this whip feeling. 
So, so from here, I want you to have this, this sense that you are, you are whipping your hand directly. This directly whip. So, so rather than this over rotation, think that you're kind of moving in one fluid action to block. I should, like if you slowly, slowly you're kind of pulling and then going directly in. So you're not kind of classically rotating, rotating, but you're just whipping your hips, whipping your hips, still landing in Shizen or Hamni, but maybe not Ma Hamni completely back. You understand? Okay, so give, give that a go guys. If you have any questions, please ask, but just try. Much, the second one, more of a whip rather than classic rotation, rotation. Okay, guys, just one, one more point about this. Um, like, you need, you need really strong and fine control of your hips uh, and your ability to twitch from your hips in order to do this successfully. Otherwise, the weight of the technique will just pull your body around. So we see this a lot in different, like for example in Sochi, after this Mikazuki, those who know Sochi, after this Mikazuki Geri, then you know you're doing Uchuki Oizuki, then, then the first one, the first one of course is this, this squeeze and kind of completely rotate and then this Jozuki. Uh, the next one though, the next one it's easy to whip, kind of, kind of coming direct. Of course this makes Hikite but you don't play both hands rotation, counter rotation. You just whip your hip to produce this technique. We have this feeling in lots of different kata. And you should try to kind of uh, build it up because it means that you're really working on fine control of your hips and your legs. And, and one last point, like this is kind of a, a whipping action, and you think like a, you know, like a bull whip, where you're kind of cracking it at the end. It's very difficult to practice this slowly. It's the very fact of doing it fast and trying to have that fine tune of your hips, that is the practice. So I can see people kind of trying to do it slowly and orchestrate it. It's not really the same. Just throw yourself into it and then try to control the core after that. I have a question, Sensei. Yes. Isabelle, s'il te plaît, quand il fait une équipe, il semble le faire directement au lieu de le faire comme à Gizou qui sont deux. Mais quand il vient l'application qui veut qu'il y ait, qui m'ont dit qu'il fallait qu'il présente la pompe en premier. Si on fait à, à, à Gay Nyon Nikité, ça devient difficile de présenter la pomme en premier. Je veux juste savoir son idée là-dessus. Là. Uh, ok. Uh, yesterday, yesterday, when you talked about uh, Nyon Nikité, you talked about the, the principle of putting, putting your palm first and then your fingers. Yeah. But how, how, how would you do that uh, with the Agi uh, movement? When, because we have to, to do it like the uh, Agi from bottom to, to top. So, what's your thought about that? About that application, maybe? Who, who said that you have to do it like Agazuki? Uh, ben, 
le principe oui, principe. Oui, manuel. Parce que le point, le point en principe, dans, dans le livre, Bescaraté, puis la façon que nous autres, on ne se le fait enseigner, on le fait en remontant. Donc, okay. euh, de façon à gué, là. Les, les deux doigts partent. Exemple, de la poitrine, ils vont vers le haut. So, it would be uh, from Bescaraté and the, the way that we got it uh, taught. Like, we, we learned it uh, that way, from, from bottom to top, in Aggie's uh, form. Yeah, so, so like, in Bescaraté, they talk about this kind of coming up. Which is true, which is true, like you're, you're kind of coming up, this feeling, up and then in, but like even, like even also Agazuki, a lot of people kind of do, a lot of people do this Agazuki like a, like a flicking feeling, a flicking feeling, whereas Agazuki, like Agazuki is this thing like if, if I'm going to punch the stomach and he reacts, he reacts this kind of like kind of going out of the way and then I come up this thing. Like we, we you know, we're, we're kind of coming up at the end, but ultimately you're, you're, it's the feeling of going into up. Well, this is the same. This is up feeling. Up and then in. This feeling. This like this. You understand? So, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, two things about kind of, uh, kind of being kind of ingrained about like a one simple descript description in, in Best Karate. Then of course this is quite a good physical reference point, but it was just one point and it was a very simplified point. Like also, also in Best Karate, they teach like Jordan Punch and Manji Gabai, the application of Manji Gabai being like this. There's lots of really oversimplification of stuff in uh, in best karate. So you want to be careful about how much kind of you dogmatically follow that, and just think about how how this how this can have a rising feeling and then finish with the fall. So we, we, we should always we should always respect the traditions of karate, but we always must remember it's an art, and if it's an art, it is constantly evolving, constantly growing. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. One minute. Please practice that, and then we'll move on. Okay, okay, yummy, good, good. Um, guys, just just one more point, because I'm just watching people. There's an awful lot of people who, you know, this kind of rising thing, to go back to this, then, then with, with Agu, Agazuki as well in, in MP, those of you who know MP, you know, you'll see a lot of people who are, who do this kind of, kind of feeling, and they, it kind of almost becomes like a flick. Um, and, you know, you should try, uh, uh, you should try it on, like everything that you're doing in, in Qatar, you should try, you should try it out. And so, like if, if just, like you can easily have this kind of feeling, eh? so if you kind of try to make power this way, in this kind of flicking manner, it never works, of course. You know, you, you, you have to keep 
that kind of connection, just like Orozuki to Taitliken to normal kind of Seiken, and then kind of up at the end. But you need you need that connection right the way through. That's very different from this flick, like a lot of people do in MP, and that's the only time that we have Agazuki in kata, of course. But like now, I'm seeing quite a few people who are who are who are doing the same with Nukite. Doing the same. No, think, think how you're going to hit Teisho right the way through that course. Teisho to Nukite. Not Nukite flick, but Teisho to fingers in. This has effect. This has meaning. But this kind of fast flicking action has no meaning whatsoever. Understand? Okay. Okay, guys. Okay, let's go from. Um, okay, let's let's just go from from that point that we've just been talking about. So, so we've made. I'm going to face the camera. So, like, I've got one, two, three, four. I'm here. I'm going to do this part. Yeah. So, I've got my right leg forward. And I've just done right hand Nihon Nikite. So, I'm going to step towards the camera. I'm going to have changed angle. I'm going to step towards the camera and take Teisho and Teisho and then squeeze and then it's, it's like key. This is a punch. Okay? Okay, one more time together, everybody. Yeah? Okay, you are here. Okay, here, sweet. Tati! Okay, one more time. One more time. Okay, here, sweet. Tati! Okay, just those four moves, guys. Show me those four moves, just twice. Go for it. Okay, okay, um, so I can see a number of things. First thing, first thing is that, um, okay, this is Taishal, and you want to be able to stay connected, like that elbow and hip connection, so keep, keep that elbow and hip quite close to, to each other, so you can have that connection, and a lot of people aren't doing that. A lot of people from here are going direct, so this arm is, basically straight, and you go from a straight arm, direct, to this straight arm. Okay, be very careful that you do that, because, you know, if you want to punch, if you want to put power into your hand, the farther away it is from your body, the weaker it becomes. Okay, second thing, so, so what I suggest from, from here is the first thing that you do is get that connection. So hip and elbow close together. And then as your, as your body goes in, you can drive your body into it rather than just a hand movement that's separate from your body. Okay, the next thing, the next thing is that you have a chance to use two hands. Use both hands. Very rare in karate that we only use one hand. Like for example, in Hian Shoran, Hian Shoran, we generally speaking only use one hand. But you know, if you start to use two hands, then it's not the end of the world. But that's the, really the only one of the few examples I can think of where you only use one hand. Here is not one of those examples. So from here, use Use both hands. Use both hands to drive in. Okay, don't think about this as a block. Think about this as a strike. So for example, okay, Isabel, do you want to translate? Okay. 
So, so for example, if, if Bru was going to attack Oizuki, then he's attacking here. He's attacking to me. So like, like say, you don't have to use the, the previous move, but say I'm generally in this movement, and he's using here, then I'm blocking. I'm blocking with my hikite hand. So this then becomes the connection. So from here, I'm driving in this way, okay? It's my body mass that's going in with this, not some sort of one, two, or something weird. Yeah, I'm using this. I'm using this to go in, and maybe one more time. Double attack, double attack. But I am not trying to do something like this. That's kind of really almost impossible, but it seems that people are putting their, only their intention in this hand. Only their intention in this hand. It's really difficult. You've got both, all limbs. Use them. Use them to drive your body mass in. And connect, connect with your body mass for this tension. Understand? Yes. Okay, one minute guys, try. If you have any questions, please ask. Francois, you, yeah, use both hands, yeah? You release, release this hand. Release this hand as soon as you move, release. Release the drive thing, yeah? Then Rene, let your, let your tasio come from the side more. Like when you're preparing, don't let it come straight. Make sure it's connected, but it's coming from the outside. Outside thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not, it's not a hand movement, it's a body rotation movement. Bom, bom, this thing, yeah? Sharif, Sharif, don't, don't push your hand. Taisho, Taisho is never straight. It's, you're, 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 you're kind of pushing your hand out. It becomes less effective. Lock that, that in. This position, this position. It's quite close, as if you're hugging somebody. This thing. You can ask me. Uh, you can ask me. Um, so I've seen it done every way. I've seen it done, or I've seen it both ways. I've seen some people do uh, both foot dutch. I've seen some people do foot dutch, zenk dutch. You know, it's up to you. Like uh, generally speaking, I prefer foot dutch, but uh, it makes sense because of the rest of the kata when you're doing kind of tap this star in foot dutch and then zenk dutch. So maybe it makes sense to do one and two, but actually. Actually, uh, well, we'll talk about this in a minute, but, but the answer is either is good. Okay. Okay. Yummy. Yeah, good. So, so we'll use that, guys, as just a, um, uh, something to go forward from. Then, you know, kata, kata is constantly evolving. You know, if you, most of the Shotokan form, with the exception of one or two, most of the Shotokan kata, uh, of course, originate from Okinawan kata. And most of Okinawan kata originate from Chinese form. Uh, and so, you know, it's very difficult. If you say, okay, I'm practicing, okay, I'm practicing JKA karate, 
then what JK Karate? JK Karate of, you know, Nakayama Sensei, or JK Karate of uh, maybe Tanaka Sensei, or now Naka Sensei, he's very popular. Like, which JK Karate are you practicing? Or if you're saying, I practice traditional karate, well, what, which traditional karate? Nakayama, Funakoshi, maybe before Funakoshi, Tosu Sensei? Like there's, like, there's lots of different ways. And so just don't be strict with yourself. Listen to your body and make sure it works for you and the technique is effective rather than saying, oh, Nakayama Sensei said, did this, I'm absolutely doing that, even though it might not suit your body. Do you understand? Because ultimately, if, if that's what you're doing, you're focusing on the superficial. You're focusing on, say if you, if you, uh, you know, look at a picture of somebody, Nakayama Sensei, doing something, I want to do that karate. Well, that's not even karate, that's just a picture. It's a, it's a picture of one part of what karate is, which is movement. And so to try to, try to follow that, I think is, is a very superficial way to do it. What you really want to do is think about the movement, think about the principle, think about the ideas that the kata was trying to teach you and follow that and then see how that works for your body. Okay, so for example, the next movement, yeah? The next movement were, were here, and then, then I'm seeing some people, they're kind of doing this, and then this. And so as if, as if they, are, they are attacking someone behind, and then attacking someone, the same person. Then this was never the original kata. The original kata was just pulling, pulling, and then, then this is quite center. Maybe Kibarach, maybe, uh, maybe it's uh, Furudach, doesn't really matter. But it was here, and it's only Shotokan over the years that has become definitely Furudach and definitely kind of this. So even, even Nakayama Sensei was teaching 45 degrees, originally kind of side on. So I want you to think about what you're trying to do. So, like for example, if Rue, often these, yeah, these are often grabs. So, so like for example, if Rue attacks, uh, 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 yeah, okay, uh, yeah. So if you attack one, two, and I'm attacking this oh, head butt, and then pulling, and then this Kisami Suki, as you pull in feeling, so this, this, pull, attack, pull, attack, pull, attack, and it's the same feeling as, same feeling as this kind of feeling like we were doing yesterday, this, this anti-absorption, pull, attack feeling. But like um go to Shiho Shop, which someone attacks, you're creating the cage and headbutting. Creating the cage and headbutting. One, two, three. This feeling of one, maybe hit. Two, then from here, this three feeling. One, two, three. You understand? You understand? These feelings are head not this but this this attack so try to have that feeling one two this one ah, this feeling as you attack have that feeling Okay? Okay, one minute guys, practice, try. Okay, uh, Sensei? Yes. Could you do, after the end of today, could you do the Tai Show slowly? Yep. So. I, w I want to, to check for the bowed hand. Okay. Could you do that again? <laughs> another time, please? Well, 
other side. This way. Any side. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> okay, one minute guys, practice. If you have any questions, please ask. Kathy, too straight with your tation. You're going too straight. No, round, round. Like hot punch, hot punch. Round, round. You're one, two. No. Uh, Sensei, I yes. have a question. Yes. The last the last, move, the last movement of this theory, I have a hard time to find my um, arm, arm connection. With this Kasami ski? Okay. So, Susan, think about... Okay. Roo! Okay. I, I like Roo, really. <laughs> and, and sometimes, sometimes I want to give him a hug. <laughs> give a big hug! Okay? Then... How you'd make a hug and lift someone up, that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Because that is ultimately the best connection. To kind of to kind of connect someone, to hold something heavy, that's that's the bit that you're trying to create. So so don't don't make it a hand technique, make it a chest technique. Chest, chest, this way. So this one open. Open your chest, head in, and then boom, close your chest. Come on. Okay. Carry on, guys. One more minute. Hey, sensei. Yes. What, what, when you execute the kata in the best form in the exam or in competition, uh, that's important. You have a little movement in the front with your head, or that's the stage. Um, What's your recommendation? My recommendation is that when it comes to examination and competition, don't listen to me. <laughs> but, uh, like, you have to, obviously, when you're performing for someone else, you are doing superficial karate. Like you're, you're literally trying to project your karate to someone else for them to judge, for competition or for grading. Now, that is the opposite of what karate should be, but it's a it's necessity. It's part of karate. Um, so, of course, if someone is a really good judge, they will be able to recognize that quality. But if they're not a good judge or an examiner, then you hear you know, terrible stories where you know, the, there's a slight stupid little difference. You know, Basai Dai, they, it's not here, it's here. Okay, fail. I mean, you, know, you have these situations. So you must judge, who are you performing for? What do they want? Do they want quality or do they want a superficial element that you must show them? And then do that. Okay? Sorry. <laughs> One more minute, guys. Okay, okay, good. Guys, just one last point about this. Um, and I don't want to go on and on about it because, of course, you know, you might need to turn and face directly back to Shoman, yeah? So you might need, at this point, to be able to turn directly completely round and turn 180 degrees, with, not only with your stance, but with your, with your targeting, okay? Maybe that's part of what you need to do. But if you do that, this hand isn't effective. Because what you're doing is you turn, and then you're continuing to turn and come in. This hand isn't really moving. Whereas if the target is, like Nakayama Sensei taught, 45 degrees. Before Nakayama Sensei, for example, in uh, Waseda University, Waseda University, uh, they still follow Funakoshi Sensei's uh, teachings. So in Waseda University, there are still two people 
who, who got showdown with Funakoshi. They're like 90 years old now, but they still teach Funakoshi Sensei's teaching. They teach side, side. Nakayama was here. JK now is completely here. But the more you go round, the less this hand is working. If it's here, both hands are working. Both hands. Here, there's a little bit less. Here, almost nothing. And I'm seeing lots of people who are... And it's only really this hand that's being applied. You understand? Okay, okay guys, let's go from this nuki tape. Right leg, right hand nuki tape. Okay, okay, so you're Yuki Sachi Go Rook Shit Hutch Cool Joy And Yummy. Okay, the lovely end of Chinte. Okay, one more time, from here, one more time. Okay. Eighty, thirty, go, rock, shit, hutch, cool, joy, itch. Yeah, I'll relax. So, these hops, I'm not going to spend too long on them, uh, just to say that uh, I've been taught a few different ways over the years. I've never been taught a really particularly good application for it and I have failed in my imagination to come up with anything of any uh, kind of great insight in terms of application but the, just the variance I would say is that from here universally you want to be able to have your feet continuously flow so this foot comes back and continues to move there's no stopping with that so you're, you're going one, back, two, three. Okay, uh, so that, that's, no matter who I'm trained with, and I, I think there's kind of a great control there of not just stepping and then jumping, the step is the jump. Okay, that's one point. Second point is that I have, I have been taught this side, side, side. And so you zigzag a little bit. That's another variation. But like generally speaking, I think generally within the Shotokan world, it's just straight back. Well, it's not straight back, but it's, it's in line with the direction of your feet. So you're going slightly offline. You're going slightly offline. That's it. Understand? Okay, try, guys, try, try, try guys for a couple of minutes. Uh, just a couple of minutes, and if you have any questions, please ask.
Then Melanie Cotton. Melanie, don't don't bring don't bring your hands when you do Tayshaw, then this becomes straight. Elbow, but your hand is outside so it goes round. It goes round with your body, Tayshaw, not straight from your body, yeah? Okay, okay, yummy. So, guys, that, that is what it is. Those, those hops at the end, then I've heard everything from, um, you know, it was just merely to get back to the start position. Uh, I've heard crazy things like, you know, someone is trying to get you with a chain and you're jumping out the way. Uh, you know, there's, there's lots of different things. You can, you can certainly apply it, for example, like if, um, through attacks, and you're blocking and you're hitting him, Teisho, and then this pulling down, pulling, pulling feeling, like in this kind of Aikido thing. But that, that seems possible, but not particularly effective. Uh, the, my personal theory feeling, it's probably just they wanted to get back to the Embusen. Because Shotokan, the Shotokan Embusen became paramount. In Okinawan Karate, Embusen doesn't matter. But in Shotokan, Embusen is important for whatever reason. Uh, and so to get back to the beginning, maybe. Who knows? Okay. However, let's do Scooby Scooby Doo ending. Okay. Translated Scooby Doo. Okay. So we'll do this the ending, and then I'll, I'll we'll talk about it. Yeah. Okay. So from here, this is the the last move. Yeah. Okay. So from here, stepping back, stop. Step back, stop. Itch. Okay. Then forward, empty knee. Okay, step back, Kati Stosa. And then Kati Kanshi. And then back. Okay, one more time. One more time. So, again, we're going in that slight diagonal uh, way of moving, yeah? Zen Kutsu, sorry, Kokutsu, Zen Kutsu, Zen Kutsu, Zen Kutsu. So, oh, sorry, Furudach, Zen Kutsu. So, from here, yo. So, stepping back, Zen, uh, Kokutsu, itch. And then MP knee. Then Tate Kafruda Sa. And then Zenka Chi. And then back to your position. Understand? Let's do one more time. One more time. Okay. So. So from here, yo. Stepping straight back. Hitch. Then Zenka Tu. Then Fruda And touch. Ayame. All right, good. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the Scooby Doo ending, and uh, like to be completely serious, uh, some of you might know an instructor called Steve Ubel Sensei. Uh, Steve Ubel Sensei was a longtime student of Nishiyama Sensei, and was one of the very few people to do the instructor's course with Nishiyama Sensei full time. He was the only person to do the instructor's course full-time with Nishiyama Sensei. Do you want to, do you want to translate? <laughs> he was the first person, he was the only person to do the instructor's course with Nishiyama Sensei full-time. But more, more importantly, more importantly, he spent many, many years in Japan and he was the first student to live and train at the Hoitsugan Dojo, Hoitsugan Dojo which was Nakayama Sensei's private dojo. Yeah, 
And so from 1972 until about 1980, he was living in Japan or, and then he lived in Japan for three years and then he came back and then every year he'd go back for about six months. And he did that for those eight years. So, my point is, Steve Ubel Sensei, I spoke to Steve Ubel Sensei about this, he showed me this ending, and he said, well, and I completely believe him, there's no reason why he would, he would not tell the truth. So, Nakayama Sensei spoke about this ending and demonstrated it, and demonstrated it and spoke about it with a group of non Shotokan karateka, and talked about it as being either the original ending or a possible ending. But either way, this came from Nakayama Sensei. Donc en fait, Sensei Obo a dit que Sensei Nakayama avait démontré cette fin-là avec un groupe de personnes qui ne faisaient pas du Shotokan, donc non Shotokan, puis euh, qui elle a dit que c'était une des fins euh, possibles euh, du kata. Now, do I think that we should change the kata? No, of course not. But I think with the understanding that kata is fluid, forever changing, forever being dynamic, then we should always have this sense that there is possibilities. And if we want a possibility, then this is one of them. And certainly it comes from the authority of Nakayama Sensei. Okay, so please practice it a couple of times, and if you have any questions, please ask. Okay, yummy. Then, <laughs> then some of you, some of you are still doing the hops. Okay, maybe, maybe it's very difficult to kind of be uh, changing your your idea of what chinte is. But you know, if you have stiff thinking, you have stiff body. If you have flexible thinking, you have flexible body. Okay. Okay. So let's go all the way through, guys, from the beginning to the end. Okay. We'll do it once slowly. If you think of any questions, you can ask questions, uh, and then we'll do it one speed and power, uh, and then we'll take a short break. Okay. Okay, Yoi. Okay, slowly, nice and relaxed. Yeah. Nee. San. Shi. Go. Ro. Shi. Ha. Ku. Jo. Go! 
nisan, shi, en går och. Okay, before we do a speed and power, any questions, last questions of Chinte? Yep. The Scooby Doo ending. Scooby Doo ending, yes. <laughs> you must call it the Scooby Doo ending. Just don't tell Steve Ubel Sensei. Okay, so you've done this this last Tate Stor, Tate Ken. Then from here, straight back, Stor. Coco Touch. Then driving forward, MP. Then stepping back, Tate Stor. And then driving forward, Tate Ken. And then just back. That's all. Okay? Just those four moves. Sensei, can we do that on, when we're doing the full kata? For the ending? If you wish, yes. Okay. This is free, yeah? Like, uh, no one's judging you. No one, uh, no one is going to examine you. So, um, yeah, please be free. The only thing I would say is that, like, Shotokan kata, or kata itself, is like a universal language within different organizations. You know, you go to the JKA, you go to the SKIF, you go to the HDKI, you go to the, the AJK, AKJQ. Like, we all are practicing the same kata. So if you say, okay, I'm going to do it this way all the time, then all of a sudden you start to speak a slightly different language from the rest of the Shotokan world. And we shouldn't really do that. We should kind of basically speak the same language. Anything else, guys? Yes. do yoriash um, I, I think if like again if you if your sense if your sense is that you are kind of going and attacking somebody here then then maybe you'd make yoriash but my, my sense is not that my sense is that you are controlling someone and hitting the same person you're, you're controlling them head foot and then hitting them the same so so there's no sense of traveling. Um, and so I, I don't make any yoriash at all. And, and if anything, I, I pivot on my, my heel and have that uh, kind of fudo or kiba dach feeling, furudach or furudach. But like that, that uh, furudach meaning like immovable feeling that you're, you're really just planted in and, and holding steady into that stance. No yoriash. I think yoriash is the, the opposite of, of what the feeling you should try to create with this. Personally. Okay. Okay. May I ask a question? Yes. Okay. Uh, in order to improve our personal karate, do you think uh, we should uh, step back to traditional karate or even uh, Okinawa? 
I, I think, I don't think there's anything traditional, there's no such thing as traditional karate. Tradition, tradition is set and you, you have an archetype. And so, for example, anything that's tradition, it's, it's completely and utterly set, unchanging. And so karate is always changing. So, for example, Nakayama sensei, he called his book Dynamic Karate. And the definition of dynamic is forever changing, forever moving. And so if it's a martial art, if it's a budo, as in a martial path, then that, that everything, whether it's art or a path or whichever way you describe it, it means you are moving. You are not standing still. Or even worse, looking at somebody else who is standing still and trying to copy them. You are moving forward. Now, there's lots of ways that you can inform that journey. Lots of ways that you can kind of take from the past, respect that tradition, or respect those, those people behind us or be, before us, and take that on board, but continue to move forward. So yes, study Shotokan. Study lots of different sensei in Shotokan. Also study different styles, or, or not study, but look at different styles. See what they're doing. See the connections. And then see what that means for your body and for your needs. You know, your, everybody's body is different and everybody's needs are different. And that will produce an infinite amount of karate. That was a lot to translate, sorry, Isabel. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, yes, but uh, if, I, if I may. Of course. Uh, um, I mean, I, I think that new, uh, new Oscarati is evolving in a more uh, competition way uh, than martial way. So, I mean, to be efficient, uh, to get more efficient, is it, I mean, to go this way, um, should I go to uh, more traditional training? Um, well, I, I don't know about the evolution to sports karate. I think sports karate is, is very loud and very noisy and everybody can hear it and see it. But I don't think that karate is evolving into more and more sports. If you think about the amount of people in the world that do karate and how many of them are doing kind of KWF sports karate. Or WKF, should I say, sports karate. Maybe 10%. Maybe less, maybe a little bit more, but the most people who do karate in the world are doing traditional non-sports karate. In my dojo, we have, in normal times, 750 members, and maybe only 20 of them do competition. Uh, so in, in my experience, I don't listen to sports karate, I don't really watch it, it's not part of my life. However, I watch everything and see if I can get inspiration. So some of the training methods that sports karate use are brilliant. They produce extreme explosive power and speed. So I steal that. I, I look at some of the Okinawan karate training methods. Some of them are brilliant. I steal that. So I, I, I sometimes look at basketball, gymnastics, athletics, and the training methods that they use, and I steal them. I'm trying to constantly take inspiration from everything. But ultimately, I'm doing my karate. I'm not doing sports karate. I'm not doing traditional karate. I'm not doing self-defense karate. I'm not doing kind of fitness karate. I'm just doing my karate. And I think everyone should be given the, the skill and the, uh, the authority to find their own karate. So find it from wherever. Okay, so uh, now I got the point. Thanks a lot. Okay. Okay. Okay.
que si on regarde le portrait global, on, on a l'impression que le karaté sportif est très bruyant en ce moment, mais euh, quand on regarde attentivement, on se rend compte qu'il y a peut-être 10 des gens qui vont pratiquer un karaté sportif versus un, la grande majorité vont pratiquer un karaté traditionnel. Et ça dit que c'est bien, par contre, euh, de s'inspirer du karaté sportif. Il y a beaucoup de choses qu'on peut aller chercher à ce niveau-là, au niveau de, des exercices d'explosion, peu importe. Mais on peut aussi s'inspirer de d'autres choses, du basketball, de, de plein d'autres sports. Donc, de toujours aller chercher le, le maximum d'inspiration possible, puis de l'appliquer euh, à soi en gardant l'esprit que c'est notre karaté. Donc, c'est une dit, je ne pratique pas le karaté traditionnel, je ne pratique pas le karaté sportif, mais je pratique mon karaté. OK. Okay, last time guys, all the way through, speed apart. Okay, oi. Okay, it's there. Itch. Knee. Sun. She. Go. Roll. Shish. Hot. Go. Ojo. Itch. And knee. Sun. She. Go. Roll. Shish. Touch. Cool. And ready for the final part. Okay, good. Okay, we've only got like 15 minutes left, so let's just do a, a quick exercise, yeah? Okay, so from here, left hand out. Okay, so may chok zuki itch. And then it's shuke ni. Okay, just like kankodai, basadai, yeah? Okay, sand punch. And she block. Okay, go and block, look. She touch. Okay, so guys, let me just watch. I want you to do that 10 times. So punch, block, 10 times. Go for it. Let me see what you're doing. Okay, yame, yame, good. So, guys, um, obviously, one of the, well, the theme, the, apart from chinte, the other theme that we've been doing this weekend is this tai sabaki, and and the approach that I've taken to to teaching tai sabaki, because of course we're not really doing partner work, obviously. So the approach that I've been taking is about is about trying to create that elastic and um, powerful spring in your step that. Tai Sabaki just means, to, you know, body control, body management, literally to get out the way of stuff in that controlled, explosive way. Um, and, and mostly that's focused, of course, on our, our legs and our, and our hips and our feet. Yeah, we were talking about trying to make your feet strong. Think about them as muscles rather than groups of bones. Uh, so last 10 minutes of the class, last 15, 10 minutes of the class, we're going to do um, the same sort of feeling, but with our upper body. So I've, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people who are doing this. You're going one, and then two, and just kind of going direct. I'm seeing some people go one on the preparation, rotating, and then only hand technique at the end. Uh, I'm seeing kind of lots of different kind of uh, little tweaks in, in timing that is maybe not particularly efficient. Okay, I want you to think about your arm is, is that it has a spring, and it, it's actually real, yeah? There's something called, okay, Isabel, sorry, do you want to translate something? Sorry. Donc, en fait, le thème de la semaine, c'est le Thai Sabaki, qu'on a vu un peu dans les autres cours. Une des manières d'aborder le Thai Sabaki, ça va être en pratiquant au niveau de l'élasticité du corps, donc tout le travail qu'on a fait dans les jours précédents. Maintenant, c'est ce qu'on applique, ce concept-là d'élasticité, mais au niveau du haut du corps. Okay. Okay, so I want. Are you ready? Are you good? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so I want you to think about your arm having a spring. So this is a very real thing. It's called the, the Golgi tendon reflex. And it's exactly the same as the, the knee jerk reaction. When, when you, you, know, you, you put your knee over and, and the doctor hits it, you go like this. Like this is called the knee jerk reaction. It's actually the Golgi tendon reflex. So, so for example, when we kick, when we when we when we we do a simple technique, you know, a simple technique, you know, like these these kind of snapping techniques, your foot naturally snaps back. Okay, this is to st this Golgi tendon reflex is to stop you from hyperextending the joint. Okay, every time we do, every time we do kind of kumite and we snap, snap our technique, this is the same reflex. So, put that feeling into this exercise. So from here, use two hands, two hands to block, two hands to punch. From here, this one, snap back, then two. One, snap back, two. Not one, two, three, no. Snap, rotate, snap, rotate, snap, rotate, one, two. Understand? Okay, one minute guys, let me see. Okay, yame, yame. Guys, please watch. Many of you are doing one or two things. The first mistake is that many of you, like say you started from here, many of you are rotating and your hips have rotated. And then there's not much left for this uchuke. So you're rotating completely on the punch and then you have nothing on the block. Or some people are making showmen but then rotating on the preparation, then nothing. Charm and rotate, nothing. Charm and rotate, nothing. So timing of your hips is vital, as well as this relaxation. Okay. okay, one more minute guys. Then Genevieve, relax your shoulders and snap. Don't leave your punching arm out. Snap your punching arm. Then Jose, uh, Jose, you're, Valencourt, uh, Jose, you're, you're, doing, you're doing two sharp movements, but it's a little bit stiff. I don't want to see this fist. Snap. Tna! Relax. Tna! Relax. You're stopping and then starting again. Then Linda, make sure you're, you're landing in Shomen Dutch. Shomen Dutch on the punch. Hold that form for the split second. Shomen Dutch, relax, then rotation. You're already starting to turn. Yeah, timing, timing, timing. Uh, 
Uh, Tara Lee, a little bit more relaxed on that punch. As soon as you make that punch, prepare immediately for Uchuke. Let the hikite, the snap of the punch, the snap of the punch is the preparation, and then you block. The snap of the punch is the preparation, and then you block. Okay, yame, yame. So guys, listen. Like, this of course is in Basai Dai. It's also in Kanko Dai. So let's just think about Kanko Dai. Kanko Dai, generally speaking, we use, Basai Dai, generally speaking, you do one hand Uchuke. One hand Uchuke. Kanko Dai, generally speaking, is two hands. Two hands. Really, it makes no difference, okay? But let's just kind of focus on uh, Kanko Dai. So this, this movement exists in Kanko Dai, and it also exists in Kanko Sho. So of course, of course, this physical form, this physical form doesn't exist in Kanko Sho. But the feeling does because both kata come from kushanku. Kushanku. Kushanku is a Okinawan kata. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, so in Kushanku, you have this, in Kushanku, you have this snap punch. I'll show you from the side. This snap, snap. It's like, maybe it's difficult to show you on camera, but you are punching, relaxing. Elbow down, fist still pointing to target. It's snap, snap, snap. In Kanko Dai, this became this. In Kanku Shou, this became this. You understand? The same movement in Kushanku produced two different shapes in Kanku Dai and Kanku Shou, but the feeling is the same. So we're going to see that the two applications come from the Kata Kushanku, which comes originally from the style of Shito Inu. Then we're going to see two ways to do it, to extrapolate it differently in Kanku Dai. So, for those who know Kanku Dai, uh, sorry, Kanku Sho, maybe some people are one, two. Maybe some people are one, two. But what I really want you to do is have the same snap feeling. This one, two, this feeling. Punch, relax. Punch, relax. Understand? Okay, try guys, and if you have any questions, please ask. Yeah. Yes, uh, the stance when you're punching from that, you know, um, you know to, to the front, and then when you throw the uh, block, where is your stance direct towards, directly towards? Uh, is it straight like a front stance, then could you got you? In, uh, in Kanku Dai or Kanku Sho? Kanko Dai. Yeah. Okay. So, so guys, um, yeah. Then again, there's, there's a number of ways that people do this. So, so for, and it depends really on your hip flexibility and your ankle flexibility. So, I, so some people, some people a little bit step and then they come back and then a little bit step. That's okay. Um, some people kind of pivot on the ball of the foot and do this. I think this is a little bit awkward. Your, your bum starts turning up, turning out, and, and you don't really kind of create, like, if you, th okay, I'm facing towards the, the, the I'm center, I'm straight on, my, yeah, straight, I'm straight onto the camera here, right? If I've punched here, and then I shift this way, I'm blocking this way, but also my body's going this way. So it's not so efficient. Some people from here, they'll go on their heel. It's a little bit better. 
because uh, the body's going in the right way. Stance is a little bit short though. So for me, this is what I do. Uh, I can get, you know, there's no right way to do it, but from here, I pivot on my heel and ball. And I almost end up in, in Zekostach. And then I come back. And then I pivot on my heel and ball the opposite way. And it, and it means that I end up moving offline and also into a stance that I can maintain. Okay? Okay. Okay, one more minute, guys. If you have any questions, please ask. Okay, okay, yummy, good. Okay, so guys, I mean, we're running out of time, but my point is, is that you should think about your body as a complete spring, an elastic spring. So I think, I think most people, most people, when they, they think of their body, they, let's use the analogy of a bridge. So they think like a bridge, it's one rock and next, or stone, 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 and you create a bridge. Yeah? And, and they think about the, the body in the same way you have one bone on the next bone and, the, and each bone on top of each other and you create this skeleton, this structure. But, but this, is, this is the worst, the worst um, way of thinking about your body. Because we all know if two bones touch each other, it starts rubbing and you get arthritis, you get inflammation, and it's really bad. If, two, if joints start to rub, it's really bad. Bones don't touch each other. So I, I want you to think of your body like a, a suspension bridge. You know, like a big, long suspension bridge that has like steel wire holding these parts in place by tension. So, so for example, you know, like the, the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. This is a suspension bridge and it moves. In, in high weather, it wobbles. It kind of has this, this way of vibrating because it's in tension and it kind of moves. If it was stiff, it would break. But because it's relaxed and fluid, it can move and take different winds and tremors and stuff like this. Understand? Okay, so your body is the Golden Gate Bridge. All, always painting. Okay, last one. Yoi. Okay, Golden Gate Bridge Karate. Okay, yoi. Ni. Okay, so, Oizuki pull, itch. Okay, then back knee pull. Okay, Oizuki pull, sa. 
Any questions? I have a question. Our body is more like not golden uh, rich, but like more silver and bronze. <laughs> <laughs> what we will work on to be better. Jill says that you need you need some very professional workmen with hard hats and overalls to come and give you a complete makeover. <laughs> I think there's somebody going to ask a question. No question? Yeah, yeah I had one. Yeah. About something that you said last year when you came here about uh, the final form of a technique such as Kizamizuki or Gyakusui, whatever, and you said uh, this is just a, a form this is not the technique. And uh, what we were doing just now raised that, uh, uh, that idea because uh, it's hard to do what we were just doing if you put the, uh, uh, what we call hime yeah. and in the end at the form, uh, final form. And I was just wondering if I understood you correctly last year because what you sounded like you were saying was that if this is the power, uh, I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, yeah. You say that, uh, let's say that X marks the end of the technique. The way we were taught to uh, use our power was the red line, and the way you were suggesting it is the blue line. So that the end, you've only got about uh, 20 or something like that percent left. And it's much easier to do an exercise like we were just doing. Yeah. So then I, yeah. I yeah, so that's, that's, that's brilliant. I think whenever I teach, I want you to come with me so you can draw a graph to explain it to people. But that's, that's brilliant. So the point is, is that, okay, like I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to kind of tense, tense my, oh, I can't, my muscles are too big. <laughs> but I, I'm going to tense my bicep, right? So when I tense my bicep, then, then this, is, this has a strength curve. And it's exactly the graph that you just, well, almost exactly the graph you just joined. So imagine, okay, so I have this heavy weight, oh Jesus, too heavy, too heavy. <laughs> I have this heavy weight, less heavy weight. Okay, like holding this weight here is difficult. Okay, holding it here, moving it here is easy. And then moving it here is difficult. So. I have the first third difficult, second third easy, third third difficult. And my point is, is that you have this natural bell curve of strength. And the first third of the movement is weak. The second third is very strong. And the third third gets weaker. And so you have this natural bell curve and it's that middle part that you want to try to synchronize your, your, your explosive power. So not just this, not just this, not just this, but everything, everything together. And it's boom, it's that point there. That's the strongest point. But we focus on this point, which is arguably the weakest, one of the weakest points. Yeah? Okay. Anything else? No? Okay, guys, fix it up. Okay. Ready? Oh,